Hi, this is Rick. This video is about two different scripts that I've just written. One is for the Blink Troll, which is the remote controlled uh, targeting system mod by Freddy M and Vils. Really good mod. The link is in the script. Really suggest that you get it if you're looking for a quality targeting system. Basically what a Blink Troll is, I personally didn't know what a Blink Troll was until I looked it up, is basically this remote control target um, it basically moves from a start to an end path and back to the start position so this is one loop once it's switched on it automatically moves across the rope and back again and and when it sustains a hit this rotates in position uh, there are currently two set up here I've got a 50 meter and a 100 meter you could obviously set these up at whatever distance you want the script just simply allows you to, uh, to to toggle them on and off when you toggle them off you have to allow for it to travel the and complete its full loop so if you toggle it on just after it started it would obviously head to the end and then come all the way back before it finished its loop obviously if it's close to the end then it's then it's probably the best time to switch it off the the ability to toggle them on and off is is quite useful um, and next to this, I put a little bell, which is a shooting range bell. And so, this, so when you run the add action, uh, which is either in the central position, which on the laptop, which allows you to switch each of these on independently or switch them off independently. Essentially, you're just toggling, toggling the state. And then over here, you've got a cell phone, which specifically lets you toggle this particular target state. Same thing here, toggle that state. So I'm going to show you how it works, and um, it's really easy to set up. I mean, you literally inc you download the mod, you subscribe to it off the Steam Workshop. Uh, as I said, the link is in the script. Um, you then activate the mod once it's downloaded in your launcher. You then start your mission editor, which is obviously Eden. You then place down your your target range. I mean, if you want, you can copy this as is and put it into your mission, or you can create your own. You can string the uh, blink troll between trees or any object that basically kind of looks like it would, would logically support a, a targeting system. So, okay, let me show you how it works. All right. So I'm going to switch on, you can hear the bell ringing, 50 meters on, and 100 meters on. You see a hint on the top right telling you this, this current state. switch that off so it says it's completing the last loop 50 meters and when it gets to the end it will switch off it's time at 50 meters stopped okay so this one is currently active this is 100 meters drop down my And you can see the 100 meters has now stopped. Okay, just for reference purposes, the script is reasonably simple to understand. Basically, the remote control is handled by two add actions in this case, because I'm running two targets. The sad action sets an orangey, br orangey brown color for the text toggle uh, target 500 meters. In this case, I, I set these to 500 and 1000. You can just change the text to whatever distance you're going to have your targets. 
and then the key part is this command here which basically runs the uh, target move and um, it has two input parameters the name of the blink troll and the distance in each case and you put these lines on your laptop or cell phone on a table nearby the the back of the uh, target range and then you can just run it uh, as I said you need to change the the distance and you need to change that number and the reason these numbers are here is so that when the script runs it can feed back a hint to you just telling you uh, which one is on and off especially if you have multiple different blink trolls running right next to each other uh, so all it does is it's very simple it passes the target and the distance parameters from the uh, script that's being run so blink troll and the distance will be passed into these two variables blink troll one will be in target and distance uh, will be 500 it then uh, looks at the target uh, which is the blink troll itself and it says uh, gets a variable running and it checks to see if the variable uh, variable is actually declared if it isn't it will automatically assign zero to the variable and it checks to see if the variable is equal to zero then it sets it to one meaning it's now running and it passes a hint to the screen and it says uh, hint distance in meters has started if it's already already running in other words the variable running is one then it sets the variable to zero and it passes a hint to the screen which says uh, hint format target whatever distance whatever distance this is has stopped its completing its last loop uh, having set the variables up it then runs a little a while statement and it basically checks and it says while the target variable running is set to one meaning it's on and it sleeps for half a second and then it runs the animation source motor source which basically is an animation process that moves the object across the wire for 14.6 seconds and then it reverses the animation to go in the opposite direction for 14.6 seconds and then it checks to see if the variable is set to zero if it is then the target has been stopped and it posts a message to the screen saying the blink troll has been switched off or is stopped it's very easy to set up you can copy this whole thing into your mission. You downloaded the mod, obviously, subscribe to it. Activate the mod in the launcher, and when you get into the launcher, or the editor, I should say, you'll find these objects under FM Target Barricade Pack. If you look under Props, you'll see them here. This is obviously just the Blink Troll. They've got lots of different uh, targets, barricades, uh, and uh, FM targets. So it's an excellent mod and I recommend you uh, subscribe to it. Okay, the second script, which I'm just quickly demoing, this is an update to an existing script for a loadout usage. This is just to simplify the process when you have a large group of players or players in your group and you only want them to be able to take a certain type of loadout. The reason that I made this is because one of my friends on Steam said to me, you know, I'll get so frustrated because I have like, you know, 20 or 30 players and we spend like two hours for waiting for everyone to get their loadout sorted out. Even if we have specifically uh, set up a limited number of loadouts, they said, could I make a script for them that would basically restrict the arsenal usage to the point that we could even have a bunch of predefined units that have got loadouts on them that are essentially, for all intents and purposes, like mannequins that you could just literally go up to and just take the loadout off that unit. And it's actually a really good idea, in my opinion. Uh, so I made the script for that purpose, but having made that, then the other options would be when you're sometimes out in the field and you... Um, you need a particular loadout that you don't have or you run out of ammo and uh, there's no way of replenishing your ammo so you would like to be able to take the loadout off a dead body or maybe even clone the loadout from one of your teammates so essentially this is what the script does so i'm going to show you how that works so in the header of the script you can set some configurable options one is to take loadouts from any unit, including dead units, whether they are players, civilians, enemy, and so on. 
quite useful in, in the instance that you need to, let's say, infiltrate uh, an enemy camp and you want to dress up to look like one of the enemy. Or if you were using like something like this where you had, I mean, in this instance, I've got a hell of a lot of units uh, for custom loadouts. Maybe not obviously having as many as this, but have whatever custom loadouts you need and then uh, your team will be up and running and ready to go and play some Armour 3 Move up. Copy. within a matter of seconds. Move right. Roger that. Waiting. So let's say I want to take the loadout of this guy. Okay, now it's automatically saved my loadout, so if I respawn, I'll respawn with this loadout. Um, if I kill this guy, for example, we got a man down. and I want to take his loadout, rather, I'll just take his loadout. You have to pick up his gun if he, if, if it's a dead unit, you have to pick up, because it's a separate object, uh, it's not attached to him, so, so it's very useful, and I think that uh, if applied correctly, it could be, could be a, a massive time saver. The, the way that the script differentiates between these mannequins, incidentally, and normal units that you're playing with, either AI or players, is by simply switching off the simulation on these objects. When you place down objects that, are, that have the simulation off, the script will automatically profile them, store all their loadouts, and give them sort of random animations to make them look pretty cool. So you can see that these units are all in different stages of playing an animation. It just makes them look a little bit more interesting. And uh, if you're positioning these guys in a, a main supply base, uh, you could, if you wanted to, you could obviously change these units to look like mannequins or v like VR units or something like that. So they're less uh, human looking. Anyway, so that's the updated script, and I will update this on the Steam Workshop uh, for everyone to use. Uh, if you want to subscribe to any of these scripts, just simply go on to my Steam work Workshop page. You'll find all of the scripts there, including uh, in some instances, or in quite a lot of instances, you'll get the, uh, a direct uh, Dropbox link to the download. If you want to use this particular scenario, which is essentially just a demo, and obviously you can just simply just you know select this whole lot and copy it so if i go into the script you can see the, the script is called ross clone loadout the implementation is is extremely easy you just simply run that line in your init.sgo file uh, these are the different options that you can configure and, and everything below this line th this area you can uh, don't don't touch it unless you know what you're doing it's not necessary to modify this um, so all you need to do is you just change these three lines here from true to false if you want to switch it off. Uh, if you don't want to be able to clone dummy units, then you can just, just change it to false. If you want to allow the clone of player group units, uh, or group loadouts, then any member in your group or any player, you'll be able to clone if you set this to true. And if you want to clone the loadouts from dead units, that then you just set this to true. You're going to switch these all off. If you switch them all off, obviously then nothing happens, uh, which would be really stupid. However, but if you want, you can just choose one or two of these, like just allow them to clone the loadouts from other players uh, or players in dead units and so on. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this content and are new to this channel, make sure you click on the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you can get notified when we release new content. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.